15th, 2019, YouTuber Omi Hellcat and uploaded his first video back. titled Payday Every to Loaded them? Construction. The vlog ends with a very deep message. Always remember, live life the way you will want to live it. You only get one chance at this, one shot at life. One chance, one shot, that's it. Any mistake that you make, it's done. You're done. Little did Omi know, starting this YouTube channel could have been the one mistake that would ultimately land him in federal prison. That very first video that Omi posted got 60,000 views in the first three days. The video shows Omar stepping out of his mansion, walking down his long driveway with more than 15 all-white cars parked in it, and telling the viewers about his entrepreneurial endeavors. Hold up. Let me, let me, let me, check, this, let me check this out. Let me check this out. What is that, a Jeep? What was that? What was the back? A Challenger? It shows Omar Challenger, stepping out of his mansion. Rolls Royce. Mustang down his long driveway with more than 15. What was that? I don't know what that is. Hold on, I'm looking at the cars, man. Type R, Toyota. What is that? A Rav4 or some shit? All white cars parked in it and telling the viewers about his entrepreneurial endeavors. From there, he drives to his first nightclub that he owns, where they are doing renovations. Then he goes to his second nightclub, where they just made the final touches before opening. Omi continued to post vlogs that started with motivational messages about life. You have one thing, an advantage over a lot of people. You're free, you're young, and you're healthy. No excuses. Start trying to keep up with everybody. Stop going out buying Balenciaga. Typically, the middle of his videos would be him tending to his businesses, buying expensive clothes, jewelry, new cars, vintage cars, tour buses, and even houses. For a wildly successful man, he was relatable, down to earth, Chef. and kind. Far Chat, you guys, you guys are you guys missing the point. You guys are missing the point. A lot of people don't get it. He says, stop buying Balenciaga and trying to keep up with everybody. He buys it because he can afford it or whatever the fuck, and he's buying it. He says, don't try to keep up with everybody when you're not on their pace, which is fine. I think that's what the message is. Far from the narcissistic rich assholes we typically see on the internet. Within two months, he reached 100,000 subscribers. By the end of summer 2019, he had 300,000 subscribers. But every time he was asked about how he obtained his wealth, his answers were extremely vague. What do I do for a living? Started off as an app developer. Started um, as an app developer. By the way, drink water. But as Omi spent more time showcasing his lifestyle on the internet and being more open about how he made his money, he caught the attention of the FBI. And on November 20th, 2019, just six months after his first video, they raided his home. This case file shows 88 lines of personal property that the federal government seized from Omi. Over the next couple of months, the FBI confiscated $5,875,000, 58 vehicles, including a 2020 Lamborghini Huracan, a 2019 Lamborghini Aventador, and a 2019 Audi A7. They also took 21 properties, including buildings in downtown Philadelphia and mansions in the suburbs. You would think that in a situation as serious as this, Omi would keep quiet. But as soon as this happened, he went live on YouTube to tell his fans about the raid. At first, he thought the feds were after him for tax evasion, which was partially true. And Omi claimed that he was innocent. But it wasn't just taxes that the feds were worried about. Bro, when I tell you they took everything, they took every SD card, every camera, um, every television in my house. Houses, IPTV is a great area. You know, the Copyright Act hasn't been hasn't been updated since the 1960s and, True. You know, i hit i hit a gray area and exploited it and they just didn't like it omi thought he had found a loophole in the u.s copyright law and was exploiting it now if at this point you're feeling extremely confused as to how this guy even got into this situation in the first place boy is that what i'm doing right now chat well i'm watching this video it's kind of a gray area because I'm kind of yoinking the content, dude. Place. This is exactly how his hundreds of thousands of fans felt. Ironically, once the feds raided him, that's when Omi started opening up about exactly how he made his fortune. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. 
90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the USA. Every month, they introduce their members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more based on a preference quiz they fill out. Every box of awesome contains about $70 worth of goods inside, but only costs you a fraction of the value. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you like to one, keep it, two, swap it for a different box, or three, skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. One of my favorite boxes is the Weekender. With this box, you'll get a very stylish and functional carry-all bag. It's a perfect size for a weekend trip or as a carry-on for a quick flight. If you love coffee as much as I do, check out Concentrate. You'll get a cold brew coffee maker, some Bolivar bitters to add a unique flavor to your coffee, and a very cool concrete desk set to store your bits and bobs. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter PatrickCC20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash PatrickCC20. I, I bought it. Omi and a Hellcat, whose real name is Bill Omar Carresquillo, operated a large-scale internet protocol television, or IPTV, piracy scheme in which they fraudulently obtained cable television accounts and then resold copyrighted content to thousands of their own subscribers who could then stream or playback content. This piracy scheme all started on Kodi. Kodi is essentially just a media player that's available on any device. People use Kodi to watch videos, podcasts, movies, play games, Wait listen a to music, etc. However, Kodi doesn't make its own content. It's an open source streaming platform that anyone can make apps on. Because of this, it's mostly known for people who watch pirated or stolen content. Most people used Kodi on Amazon Fire Sticks. They would go on the Kodi app, install all their favorite networks, and stream content for free. But it's not that easy. A lot of these add-ons can be riddled with malware or just end up being bogus apps that don't work or stream low-quality content, which leads to people googling things like best Kodi add-ons for free and searching through blogs to find out what apps are the most trusted like The Crew or Daddy Live. Not only does researching and installing these apps take a little bit of technical skill, it also is just a lot of work. Around 2016, Omi was exposed to this and saw a huge opportunity. Omi would buy Amazon Fire Sticks for $40, oh. jailbreak them, or install all the best and most trusted apps onto Kodi, then resell them for about $120 to $150 to his customers, essentially giving customers cable TV for a one-time fee. Wait, the reason we Chad, that is so old school. Holy shit. That is so fucking old, dude. It's like doing like, that's like back in the days when, when, dude, dude, my uncle has all the fucking uh, DS games, and the guy comes up with uh, some cartridge, it's like transparent or translucid, and he puts it, and some weird thing opens up, he chooses the game from a menu, and it's like, it's like, dude, dude customers, like, essentially giving that's, customers that's cable old TV school for a one-time fee. The reason we know this is because he had no problem telling people his scheme. And back when Cody was. Popping, you know what I'm saying? I was one of the first ones doing Cody sticks, yeah. and that's how I started making a lot of money. Yeah. Buying these boxes from Amazon already preloaded, and just reselling them for more money. I'll buy them for $50, sell them for $120, $150. Now I was selling thousands of fire sticks. I'm talking about a lot of fire sticks. In 2016, Omi said that he made $1 million flipping fire sticks. Chat. That gave him a. Chat, maybe I don't know a lot about this, Chad, but I feel like uh, in the past, what happens with, with big cases like those is that um, the authorities like to make a, an example on some of these people. Because one is it's like one guy, right? And they, they make an example out of all the people that are like uh, out there, whatever, and they get clapped super hard. Enough money to fund his next piracy venture, which would make him tens of millions of dollars. By this point, Omar was kind of a regular in the online piracy community, which is surprisingly large. I was a negative person in Cody because I was like a wrestler. There was good guys and there were bad guys. I was the bad guy. Ouch, because ouch, that's ouch. That's how I got people's attention. He was known by the username Target in 1080p. His YouTube channel was originally named Target in 1080p and featured videos of him discussing things in the IPTV space. One particular man named Dexter took a liking to him. Dexter was a developer and Omi was the financial backbone. Together, they made an app for Cody called Gears TV, which was inspired by his favorite video game, Gears of War. Gears TV was Omi's all-in-one digital content package with some of your favorite shows like Game of Thrones, Better Call Saul, Twin Peaks, all of the major networks like ABC, ESPN, and Fox, channels that are only shown in the UK and Canada, and even more premium packages like NFL Sunday Jesus. Ticket. Gears TV provided all of that content in 1080p resolution for as low as $15 per month. If someone were to pay for regular cable, it could cost them anywhere from $60 to $200 per month. 
but how was he able to do this? Essentially what Omi did was purchase cable subscriptions from Comcast, Spectrum, Verizon, DirecTV, and Frontier Communications. These cable subscriptions come with a box that contains encrypted media. Omi purchased decoders from China to remove the encryption, then capture cards to download the content and send it to a server where it would be redistributed over the internet to his subscribers. Gears TV was cheap and provided way more value and content than any cable company could ever compete with, and word spreads fast in the IPTV community. Omi went from making $5,000 per week to $400,000 per week in just a few months. The indictment claims that in total, the defendants received more than $30 million in subscriber fees. Omi said he was still living in the hood of Philly at this point, and nobody knew the kind of money he was raking in. His first purchase was a 2016 Camaro SS 50th edition, his dream car. Keep in mind, Gears TV was no small operation. They had large servers, customer service representatives, and the government did have their eye on these schemes. As it got more popular, the monthly price increased, which pissed off customers as their $15 per month turned into 20, then 30, then $40, getting closer and closer to regular cable prices. Omi sold his app to a private investment company in 2018 for what? a whopping 40 million dollars. What? This was perhaps his most genius move because- Who bought that shit? Wait, to investors? Wait, 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 wait. Brother just repackaged shit that he, that he bought? and made a whole scheme of it, and then he sold the scheme to investors. Not too long after, Gears TV shut down, but it did not stop there. Omi used his large payout and expertise to build a new and improved app called Reloaded TV. This was everything Gears was and more, with a way better interface. Wait, he double dipped! and higher quality content. Reloaded very quickly became one of the biggest apps in the IPTV space because of its great user interface and reliability. Wait, it's un wait he, sold, he sold his scheme and then became a prime upgraded competitor of his own product? Clear what exactly happened to Reloaded TV? Seems like it wasn't around for very long. Because in 2019, Omar abandoned the Target in 1080p name and changed it to Omi in a Hellcat. And he stopped talking about the IPTV space as a whole. He claims he knew the industry was dying and the feds were cracking down on other- just says you're spreading BS propaganda. How is this propaganda? I, I think I'm- I think I'm, I, I'm listening to this properly. ...app similar to Reloaded. Now is it possible that Omi's YouTube channel alerted the FBI? Not necessarily, but it didn't help his case. Anyone who is in the business of distributing media knows there are others trying to steal it, but Omi's YouTube channel promoting his own brand and attaching a face to the scheme just made it that much easier to identify the perpetrator. Bragging and flaunting his wealth could have pissed off authorities, and yeah, they're human. Maybe they did want to put him in his place a little bit. Maybe they were harsher on him than others to make an example out of him. In one vlog, Omi found out that federal agents boarded his flight to the Dominican Republic to make sure he wasn't trying to flee the country. But you have to remember that all of the information I just gave you, his audience didn't know about. They had no idea why the FBI was after him. They just knew Omi had to restart his life. Please continue to support this channel. I'm gonna stay strong. I'm gonna try to beat this shit. They broke me. They broke one of the strongest people I know, which is me. They broke me, but no one got me to this position. Only but me. Start taking responsibility for your actions. Start taking Omi's YouTube channel after the raid became dedicated to him trying to regain his wealth. Chat, chat. The, the, in, in our modern day and age, though, I feel like people do this right, and they compound the thing with like crypto and like untraceable shit, and it becomes even, it be even harder to people to get caught. Whatever. Start new businesses. So it's like buy uh, more cars. They should go worse and worse. To be honest. Watching him. He started a printing company slash merch brand under the name Reloaded, where he made and sold all different types of clothing out of a room in his house. Keep in mind, he had his construction business and various other side hustles that kept him paid. Plus, it's not like the feds emptied his bank accounts entirely. I must have random shit. I must have shit at all. He was broke, but his version of broke is going from tens of millions to maybe just a few millions. But it wouldn't be long before the FBI came back. The whole FBI situation, it seems like they're trying to tack on money laundering charges, Tax evasion charges. From 2016 to 2018, when Omi made cash. tens of millions of dollars, he admits that he did not pay his taxes. However, he had a reason. He claims that the accountant he hired told him that she was CPA certified when she wasn't and that she never paid his taxes the right way. Oh, but come he was on, more man. than willing to pay the millions he owed. Bro, However, it's always the fucking taxes. It is always the fucking taxes, dude was more than willing to pay the millions he owed. However, once he finally got together the money to pay his taxes, it was stolen from him. 
He posted a video titled, I Got Robbed for a Million Dollars, in which you he claims that he took $920,000 out of the bank in cash to give to his accountant. He left for Dallas for two days, and while he was gone, someone cut the power off from his house and stole the cash, some electronics, and his girlfriend's purses. The funny part is, a lot of his own Rick fans Ross. were suspicious. It seemed like Omi was trying to stash a million dollars and throw off the feds by setting up a robbery. Sorry IRS, I can't pay my taxes because somebody stole my money and here's my YouTube video to prove it. Plus you have to think, why would anyone bother stealing Xboxes and TVs when you have a million dollars cash? Conveniently, this video was posted on the same day that Omi released his very first sneaker, the Omi Zeros, which was just a Nike Jordan 1 silhouette that replaced the swoosh with a lightning bolt. He even took the Air Jordan branding and replaced it with Air Omi. What now, the fuck is the going Nike on that? for a shoe brand isn't something new. It was a really hot trend for the past few years. I even bought myself a pair. Omi would slap the word reloaded on a popular team's logo or really any iconic brand trade dress. It's pretty clear that Omi's specialty is copyright infringement. Building an original brand is way too much work and too risky. However, things got really bad for Omi in September of 2021 when he was formally indicted with criminal copyright infringement, wire fraud, money laundering, and several other crimes. The feds came back once again and raided his house for the second time. This time, he made much bigger headlines and was even interviewed on the news. Just to be crystal clear, the indictment that came down today. Wait, I've never seen this. Completely innocent of those. Um, now, completely innocent would be a, a, a false statement. Now, ignorance is no excuse for the law. Again, you'd imagine someone would be quiet during this instance, or at the very least have their lawyer speak for them. But Omi was still convinced that he exploited the system. Omi's whole life at this point was dedicated to fighting this case. He barely uploaded YouTube videos, maybe once a month. And when he did, you could just tell this man's spirit was broken. But after months of deliberation from his legal counsel, Omi pleaded guilty in February of 2022. I'm letting you guys know that I'm pleading guilty. Um, long talks with my attorney, and um, it's the best option, you know. Ignorance is no excuse, like I've always said. And it's, it, to me, it's about, you know, accepting responsibility. Now, he was going to serve some time in prison. Three U.S. government now. attorneys say that Omar, a.k.a. Omi and a Hellcat, should serve 15 years and 8 months in prison for crimes related to his pirate IPTV service, Gears TV. So he spent all of his time grinding to get his business affairs in order so his family can survive Jesse. while he's away. But on March 7th, 2023, Omi finally met his fate. United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, Judge Harvey Bartle III, acknowledged that the advisory guidelines of 24 years would be highly unusual for a copyright matter, and therefore decided wow, that 66 yeah. months would be enough to punish Omar and send a deterrent message to any of his followers considering the same type of behavior. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Hold up. and therefore decided that 66 months would be enough to punish Omar and send a deterrent message to any of his followers considering the same type of behavior. On top of the five and a half years in prison, Omar got five years of supervised release. He had to forfeit $30 million worth of assets, which was mostly vehicles and properties. And he had to pay more than $16 million in restitution, $10 million to the cable companies and $5 million to the IRS. But surprisingly, Omi was happy with this outcome. He could have gave me 15 years if he wanted to. He really could have. He really could have. He could have gave me 15 years and I guess no one would have questioned him on it. And to the fact that he gave me another chance with my kids, like I said, man, I'm always gonna have that man in the back of my mind. Throughout this entire time, Omi's supporters have had his back, and a lot of them don't look at him as a scammer, nor a fraudster. Probably because most people don't have sympathy for billion dollar corporations. Omi was stealing from corporations and giving their product to regular people I mean, for a fair price. I mean, bro, bro, because you're wedging in at the right spot because everybody fucking hates their corporate overlords and shit, and you're kind of like giving them a solution to a problem and they hate the person that is at the top of that, that's getting fucked over it's like, it's like price I, he came from nothing and what did i squeak guys i've been squeaking a lot like this what the, why does he do that streets of philadelphia and built an empire however that empire wouldn't have existed it if it squeaks. wasn't for the people who created the demand in the first place omi knows what he did was wrong and he has accepted that he needs to do the time to pay for what he did just a few weeks ago he surrendered himself into prison if we have any faith in the justice system we just have to hope that omi comes out a better and changed man that seems fair enough that seems fair enough 
Jesse. Well, I'm guessing that I'm guessing that that, that part of the deal was making a video saying that he that he poro acknowledges PLS, and accepts the whatever, PLS, and it was on it. PLS, poro PLS. I I think in the past there, if people have gotten like deals with it that include like do, doing that, right? Yo, this is X X on yeah. the video. Okay. Oh, my voice as well. That S. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know. He's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy.